So these stories of mythology are simply trying to express a truth that can't be grasped any other way. In my video today, I wanted to talk about how to understand Joseph Campbell and the power of myth. My recent video called The Dragon Within, that is an excerpt from the PBS series with Joseph Campbell. And this is the History of Ideas channel on YouTube. My name is Steve Bond. I'm a Jungian analyst, and I've always been interested in sort of a basic concept that every idea comes from somewhere. And I seem to feel better and understand things more when I get the history of where a particular idea is coming from. The channel does more long form kind of videos, so you could check out my series on the idea of the unconscious. But today we're going to talk about what you're seeing when you watch that video, The Dragon Within, because you are seeing Joseph Campbell's gig. That's one way to think about it, right? And let me explain. I mean, a gig is a practiced, polished, the thing that I do, me doing my thing. And I certainly have a gig. And uh, Campbell had his gig because Joseph Campbell had been for 38 years the professor of literature at Sarah Lawrence College in Yonkers. And he had developed a course in mythology back in the 1970s that he had been doing for 20 years. So when you hear Campbell talk, you're hearing the gig of things that he has been doing for a long time, and he's got it down. Now, you may like the gig, you may not like the gig, but this is 82-year-old uh, Joseph Campbell, and I'm sure, just like me, I have my favorite stories. I use my favorite examples, and I talk about them over and over and over again, and yes, I've got them down. So what is the gig here that you're seeing in Joseph Campbell? We're seeing the idea, which is what his courses, uh, his courses taught, of mythology as metaphor. And in the long run for Campbell, he's talking about mythology as a metaphor for the human psyche, for human development, a kind of a psychological reference. And for many people, that's a very new idea. It's not original to Campbell. It's not new with Campbell. But he popularized that idea already with his famous book back in 1949, The Hero of the Thousand Faces. So that's what you're seeing in this video. And... We may have to do part two to talk about the content, as in the dragon, in the way Campbell talks about it, and explore that. But for today, I thought the most helpful thing that you could contextualize this video by understanding the three people who came together to make this series, Power of Myth series. So the three people are Joseph Campbell, of course, himself. Bill Moyers, the interviewer, journalist, whom you see asking questions with Campbell. And in the background is the filmmaker George Lucas of Star Wars fame. The Power of Myth was filmed, the first, what became the first five episodes, when George Lucas invited Campbell and Bill Moyers to Skywalker Ranch to get this gig of Campbell down on film. The series first broadcast in June of 1988 and was shot, the parts at Skywalker Ranch in 86 and 87, and Joseph Campbell did not live to see this series. So it's sort of the legacy that he left thanks to George Lucas putting this all 
together. And just FYI, the power of myth has been one of the most popular and profitable series ever done on public television. So for that reason, it's uh, the rights have been restricted for a long, long time because they still use the power of myth now 30 years later for fundraising and uh, selling the DVDs as, as if people buy DVDs anymore. But that's how popular this series has been. So let's talk first about Joseph Campbell. You can you read a biography, but as I said, a professor for 38 years at Sarah Lawrence with his, uh, I'm sure, very popular undergraduate course in mythology. And what is he doing? He is doing what is called comparative mythology. That's what the hero of a thousand faces really is. Taking myths from around the world, many different cultures and many different times of history, finding the common elements and seeing what we can learn about the human condition from comparative mythology. In particular, in the, especially the hero of a thousand faces, he is developing his own idea of the hero's journey. And so you can Google the hero's journey and you'll see things maybe where there are 17 aspects or steps of the hero's journey that Campbell identified. He used the term a monomyth as in the singular myth, by which he meant that the myth that underlies all mythology is the hero's journey. Now, scholarship debates this intensely, whether there is a monomyth, the real value of comparative mythology. But in 1949, this was a revolutionary idea that was trying to help people bring a sense of aliveness to the dead metaphors of myths that people took literally. So I can well imagine in that class at Sarah Lawrence that Campbell is trying to get his students to see through the myth. That's the term we use, to see through the myth. To see it not literally, but as a metaphor of the human condition, referencing common psychological experiences. And Campbell's background, he is getting this partly from Carl Jung, because this is very much the Jungian agenda, but he's also relying on anthropologists and scholars of sociology like Adolf Bastian and Heinrich Zimmer. And he became friends and a long correspondence and the editor of Zimmer's work. But that is sort of the basic Campbell, right? The metaphor of myth opening us to aspects of the human experience. And he had the gig down. So what happens next? We go to George Lucas. George Lucas, the filmmaker, his real breakthrough film was American Graffiti in 1973. And immediately he begins the script for what would become Star Wars, especially the first film. George Lucas said that he was looking to go beyond just describing the life, that he wanted to say something about the human condition. And as part of his research, he read The Hero of a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell and got the idea of the hero's journey. And he says that he'd already written the first draft of the script of Star Wars. Then he read Campbell and he wrote the second draft. And that now you can see that original trilogy of Star Wars is the hero's journey. And Luke Skywalker is, is the hero, of course. And I particularly see it in the middle film, the second film, Empire Strikes Back. That's what you don't see in movies so often because it is a dark film in which the hero struggles and struggles and 
only barely gets out of it with his life. So, now we get to 1984. Star Wars has been a big success. And Joseph Campbell is scheduled to give a lecture in San Francisco. A mutual friend of Campbell and George Lucas, Barbara McClintock, the Nobel Prize winning geneticist, wanted to introduce the two of them, so she told Lucas, you really need to go to this lecture in San Francisco. And after the lecture, she introduced the two men, and they began to talk about mythology, the hero's journey, the hero of a thousand faces, and Star Wars. From that friendship, then, a couple of years after that, Campbell had said that night that he had never seen Star Wars. And Lucas then invited him to Skywalker Ranch with his wife to go into George Lucas's private studio and watch all three movies in a single day. They watched the first movie, had lunch, watched the second movie, had dinner, watched the third movie at night. And Campbell was astounded at what he saw. So George Lucas eventually was saying that Joseph Campbell was my Yoda, my teacher in mythology. And after this friendship formed, finally, now we get the final piece of the puzzle, Lucas heard that Bill Moyers was looking to do something with Joseph Campbell for PBS, uh, probably an, in, an interview in Bill Moyers' show. When he heard that, he invited Bill Moyers to and Joseph Campbell to come to Skywalker Ranch. And they sat down for six days and filmed what became the first five episodes. Who is Bill Moyers? Bill Moyers at the time, here in the 1980s, was considered one of the best interviewers in the history of broadcast television. Bill Moyer's background was that he had been a key player in the Johnson administration. He had helped Lyndon Johnson create the Peace Corps. In fact, Bill Moyer's is said to have written the legislation that established the Peace Corps. And most importantly, Bill Moyer's also was involved in creating public television. Uh, the original bill in the Johnson administration that created PBS. So you take these three personalities together and Lucas said, just get him talking. The camera rolls and Joseph Campbell does his gig and that's what you're seeing. So in conclusion, I want you to think about the value of recovering mythology from the dustbin of history. But all too often people take mythology literally or see it as a relic of the past with no understanding, A, that we still have mythology today. In our lives, telling us how to live in this culture, that's one aspect of, of mythology. Campbell identified four functions of myth. The first function, it is the opening to wonder, opening to the amazement and beauty and joy of being alive, opening to something beyond ourselves that the myth has to motivate us for that to happen. Second function is the sociological function, which is that the myth explains how the society works, what is good, what is bad, how to behave, how not to behave. That's the sociological function of myth. Third function is the cosmological function, which is that every myth also, in one way or another, has to tell us how the world was created, how the universe works, why things are the way they are. And the fourth function is the myth instructs people about how to live a life. Right? The idea that you don't 
know or have enough time. As I said in one of my books, a single human lifetime is far too short a period in which to learn how to live a human life. That's why we need a myth. So with those four functions in mind, and just a little bit from this video of Joseph Campbell, I think maybe you can start to ask if you see the metaphor of myth functioning in your own life, and if you see the dragon in your own life that Campbell is talking about. We'll talk about that in the next episode, but that's what I want to talk about. Thank you.